we are going to be talking about my best, my top non-fiction books of 2021. Hello, hi, welcome to the third installment of the of the end of the year 2021 series i actually literally forgot the name of my own series for two seconds but okay i remembered it nice save but hello hi if you're new here i'm jyotsna and this is a book tip channel as you can see if you're looking for book recommendations or you want uh, to read more books in your life you can subscribe and i can motivate you to do the same but that being said yesterday we saw our top fictional list and today we are going to see our top non-fiction books okay so again if you've not watched the previous videos then i highly highly suggest that you do so so there's like kind of you know an atmosphere created for you because today we are just going to jump right into my top dogs and my underdogs of non-fiction 2021 so if you missed a memo, basically top dogs are those books that are kind of famous and that are, you know, I would say um, not obscure. Like people talk about these books pretty often uh, and people also talk about um, these books from what I understand on social media pretty often. And I knew like getting into the book that I'm getting into something good. Uh, and the underdogs are those things that are pretty much underrated or they are pretty much obscure on social media. Not everyone talks about it and there's a reason why you should read it. Okay, but you know what? That's not the point here. The point is that, um, yeah, there's a top dog list and there's an underdog list and all of these are in like the order that I read. So equal weightage is given to all the books that mentioned this list because I could not do any... It, top 10 or like 1 to 10 or 1 to 5 list for that matter because it was very very difficult for me to do that and that's why we are following the top dog underdog stuff okay so that being said let's get to our top dog books so i really hope you like the haphazard intro and let's just like jump right into it spectacles on paper mode on okay so first book in the top dog list is annihilation of caste by dr b r ambedkar so I read this book as a part of a group read that was organized by the Consciousness Raising Book Club. And let me tell you, if I read this book when I was 16 years old, I would have absolutely turned out to be a lawyer. Unfortunately, I'm an engineer and um, things are how they are. But if I could go back in time and read this book when I was 16, I would have been a successful lawyer, hopefully, <laughs> by this time. Okay. My point is that um, it's an important book to read to understand caste. It's a good place to start as well because when you're, um, you know, talking, sorry, not talking, when you're kind of reading a speech written by uh, the man himself, um, it's, it's going to affect you in some way or the other. Now, I think one of the most famous copies out there and the copy that I have as well that you can see somewhere on the bookshelf is actually um, the, the Navayana copy, which is, of course, like this blue one. Uh, it also has some uh, excerpts from Doctor and the Saint by uh, Arun Sati Roy. And I just felt like Arun Sati Roy uh, kind of um, stole the thunder of the entire speech uh, that was written by Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. Uh, so my suggestion would be you still go ahead and buy this book the navayana version of the book uh, but uh, don't read the first part uh, read the second part and then if you wish then read arun the Roy's part and yeah i mean this is just a personal suggestion uh, for those of you who are who are ordering the book via amazon because amazon has this version only okay so yeah that being said the next uh, book in the top dog list is the only plane in the sky by garrett graff now let me just tell you that um uh, see, this book is not spoken of much, of course, in the Indian booktube circles because it's not kind of available in India and the book is like super expensive uh, and I don't expect you to, you know, <laughs> buy it as well. But if you're looking forward to read something uh, on 9-11 and especially like this is a book that you read on audio because there are actual like recordings of the uh, terrorists who were there uh, in the hijacked plane during 9-11 as well okay so this is one book that you read on audio and not on um, not in print okay and if you get hands get your hands on the audiobook 
please do that now i read this via libby so for me it was like easier that way and i could get my hands on the audiobook but this is like the uh, entire i would say oral history of 9 11 like what happened on that day what are were the events that were transpiring uh you know at the world trade center or at the pentagon or what was happening with you know um george bush because he was the president then and it's like an, a complete oral history okay again read it if you're interested in a topic and if you're planning to read it only read it on audio if you don't have the audiobook please don't read it if you want an audiobook let me know and i will tell you how you can get one so that being said the next book in this list is when i hid my cast by babu rao pagul uh, this was translated from marathi it's a set of short stories of um, written by babu rao pagul uh, of the dalit panthers fame and getting getting into this book i knew that i'm going to get something like real good out of it the fact that caste discrimination still exists in india in the obscure places in india and that's why the last book in the story sorry the last story in the book is called when i hid my caste because it talks about how in urban india uh, one has to hide his or her or their caste in order to um, escape discrimination okay so it's very interesting because uh, in india all our surnames are basically caste based surnames uh, all our surnames kind of denote which caste you belong to which is unfortunate so how do you like escape from that form of discrimination right and that's what i learned from this book if you're looking for um, you know casteism and caste related books which talk about the um, obstacles faced by dalits then this is the book that i think you should read uh, and it's translated from marathi by the way so maybe you can also read the original considering you know how to read marathi and after that let's move on to my next book which is in the top dog list and that's hunger by roxane gay and i absolutely love roxane gay um you know as a person as a personality like she is someone who is i don't know like you know you look at her and you're like wow like she's such a strong woman but this book kind of tells you her story her story about her relationship with food and like you know her being overweight and why it was like what was the trigger for her to eat a lot okay and it's a very very important book uh, i ended up giving it like you know 4.7 or 4.8 stars because it really really resonated with a lot of things that we see in the indian society as well transcends boundaries to be very honest and it talks about how we kind of make fun of people who are fat and then we are like oh i just did this for fun and i have done this as well okay and there are instances where i also do it like unknowingly but unfortunately uh, you know it's in us that we need to keep check of all of these i would say inconveniences that we cause other people because of the size of their body okay so yeah that's that's that and the next one is okay so the next one is like one of my like top favorites again this year and that's eat the buddha by barbara demick i read this book because of the book you prize and i'm absolutely glad that i got introduced to barbara demick okay um now um i really 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 absolutely love barbara demick and her courage her bravery what is this book about this book is about the chinese occupation of tibet and it traces a history of how the chinese forces conquered tibet and still uh, have their occupation right there and why the dalai lama is in india at dharmashala and not in tibet okay it's a, it's a, it's a history of the entire region of tibet as a plateau of china of maoism and of all the kind of things that happened for us to reach over here like with china and with tibet okay brilliantly written awesome investigative journalism like i don't have any word for it because she was brave enough to go to tibet where you know foreign journalists are technically not allowed and um, yeah and she covered people's stories there which is wow amazing correct and that's why i recommend eat the buddha no matter what if you get like this book's available in india now so if you get hands on this book please go ahead and read it okay 
and that being said the next top dog over here has to be remnants of a separation by anchal malhotra chef's kiss if you've not read anchal malhotra i highly recommend you do basically this work is about the objects that um you know form the memories of divided india so what anchal malhotra did was she went to um the survivors of the partition uh, and uh, you know one of them is her own grandmother who saw the partition and she had to move from pakistan like present day pakistan to india and it talks about like the objects that they got from there to here right and it's a very heartbreaking book i absolutely love it i have a signed copy right about in my shelf it's somewhere there you know the top shelf but it's an important book to read okay i highly recommend it no matter what it's um it's a heartbreaking book that's all i can say and if you are looking forward to read more about the partition of india and pakistan i think this is one of the good places to start reading okay i am back because my battery died and um the lighting had to change because a uh, natural light kind of dimmed off but uh, yeah i am back hello hi and let's do the underdog part now so if you observe my underdog non fiction list is much much longer than the underdog fiction list and the reason why i feel this is the case is because we do not talk about fic uh, about non fiction much on social media it's always been fiction or you know some form like very few non fiction books actually make it out there uh, although i feel that a lot of like effort does go into a lot of non fiction especially when you're writing political and historical non fiction because there's a lot of research that is involved so uh, in this section i'll be talking about uh, the international underrated non fiction books as well as the indian un uh, underrated non fiction books okay so let's start with the international part and the first book that i want to mention in this list is nothing to envy by barbara demick now hold on i know what are you thinking okay this book was famous at one point of time and you're right this book was famous at one point of time i think 2 to 3 years back when it actually released it was one of like the most read books but as of today we are not reading it like much often and the reason why i actually wanted to include this in the list is because of the part being uh, i read eat the buddha first and then i wrote uh, then i read wrote i wish i could write a book as good as nothing to envy but how can an author actually write two books that are like neck to neck and it's a rarity okay like if you ask me to pick a favorite between eat the buddha and nothing to envy i cannot choose because you know as an author like when you have a gap of 2 to 3 years to write eat the buddha specifically you are doing like an amazing awesome beautiful job and for me that in itself makes this book pretty much underrated on some level because it's supposed to be like famous af okay so that's why like i don't know if this logic makes sense but that's why i put eat the buddha in um top dog and nothing to envy in underdog and what is nothing to envy about right nothing to envy is about north korean defectors and why did they defect it gives you an entire history of north korea as well helping you understand why the government is like this okay why the north korean government is like this okay so absolutely eye opening beautifully written book it's written in the form of stories again even in eat the buddha there are a lot of stories that you are told and the stories are pretty you know intriguing because they're told stories without like um you know without understanding like you are like just told a story and i absolutely love storytelling when it comes to historical non fiction so yeah that's that uh so the next uh, in the list which is international <laughs> non fiction is invisible women by caroline perez now let me just put it out there caroline perez is a tough okay yes i put it out there but the reason i wanted to include this in the list is because this book is actually 
a must read okay it has a lot of insights that are very important to today's society now i'll tell you an example right like so the book is basically about how a lot of data points that we collect are based on male experiences and not that of the other genders and a very simple example is that when you're in a room with centralized ac so when i used to be in class and there was centralized ac the women used to feel a lot more colder than the men and it's through this book that i realized that women and men uh, you know they have i would say different tolerances when it comes to cold and when you look at the data points of women feeling cold at a temperature and a man feeling cold at a temperature it kind of varies and our world our entire world including footpaths roads sidewalks everything is built on data statistics from males like purely males okay so next time when you are in an air conditioned room and a man tells you that you are a sissy for feeling too cold because you're a woman then let them know that dude it's your data point that has been taken to build this hvac system it's not my data point and i think there are a lot of anecdotes in this book that will help you realize how biased this world is and how a uh, male friendly or more specifically cis uh, man friendly the world is now this is not be spewing any hate uh, because the author herself is very problematic but i'm just putting out a point out there uh, kind of because this is like an eye opening book so you know you get my point like just doing the just passing on the good information okay so yeah and um, yes that being said um I think I have one more. Yes, I do have one more international underdog non-fiction book, and that is Inferno by Catherine Cho. And uh, the reason why I have to mention this book in underdog is because not many people know about it. And second thing being this that it's about a very important topic that is mental illness when it comes to mothers. So we all know about postpartum depression but Catherine Cho was diagnosed with postpartum psychosis and uh, being a Korean American mother uh, you know her Korean family was expecting her to take care of her child and you know mothers are supposed to be selfless have all of these kind of good what do you call it like you know all those sacrificial stuff within them but unfortunately when your own mental health is not good how will you provide for your baby for your newborn child right and it is a very important and eye opening book that talks about Catherine Cho and her um struggle with psychosis specifically and how she actually eventually reached there um and it's very important that we don't dismiss you know um mothers or for that matter when any person takes on a new role in their life due to whichever reason we don't dismiss their mental health issues and that's the message of the book and i absolutely absolutely love this book a lot okay so that being said it's time that we get into our indian underdog non fiction so most of these works are indian underdog non fiction because they are hardly spoken about on indian booktube or indian social media bookstagram yes i might have seen like couple of these books but then in general people just don't know about these books and i want people to realize that there is indian non fiction beyond indian non fiction self help i mean if you read self help that's cool good for you but then i think that we need to talk more about all the other forms of non fiction that we get including political historical etc etc okay fine let me start with the number one book uh, in this list again all the books have equal weightage but this is again uh, in the order that i actually read them so the first one in the list is colors of the cage by arun ferreira which is a prison memoir so arun ferreira as of today is still in prison because um he was arrested on being an urban naxalite unfortunately um and there is no proof against him and he is a lawyer now by the way basically he was also arrested um in you know in suspicion of having naxal connections back in um you know 2008 or, or so and basically this book talks about his memoir this is a book that he wrote in prison there are sketches in this book that he talks about and it talks about a lot of torture methods that indian jails use in order to get information out of you 
it's a pretty like short book and you will finish this like pretty quickly but again it's an eye-opening book on indian jails and the indian um jail system on a whole and that being said uh, the next book in this list is um Queristan by Parmesh Shahani and see I'm not like the biggest fan of this book for me this book is four stars but the reason I feel that this book is important and it's an underdog in Indian nonfiction is simply because of the changes that um, you know so the book is basically called Queristan and um, the inclusion of the LGBTQ community in the Indian workspace so if you are an HR if you are uh, in the corporate industry if you are even in public sector for that matter watching this video and you have the authority and power to include people from the lgbtq community into your workplace with uh, you know with with ensuring that there's no discrimination and things like that then this is a book that you have to read so the first half of the book is actually the author's own experiences because he was like the pioneer of this whole um, inclusion of lgbtq people in the indian workspace movement uh, at godrej but then in the second of the book, a second half of the book, it's more like a manifesto that you can use rules that you can apply in your organization or company or whatever in order to ensure that people from the LGBTQ community feel more accepted. OK, and that is the only reason I find this a very important read because I have not seen a similar book in the Indian space. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but then this is a one of a kind book that tells you on how your workplace can be more LGBTQ friendly. Okay, and that being said, now we are moving to some political nonfiction stuff. Okay, so uh, the next book that I have to mention is Indian Summer by Alex Van Tanzelman. And this book is really obscure, like nobody on social media talks about this book. And I read this book, um, you know, somewhere in uh, the middle of the year, somewhere around independence, because we had also like an event and like a whole life for Independence Day um absolutely brilliant political historical fiction with humorous writing which talks about the whole situation that happened pre-independence and all those days leading up to the independence i find this to be um not that biased because i have attempted to read more books on this subject but this is one of those unbiased books i can say because this is written first thing by an outsider and second thing uh, i actually like found the notes to be genuine like the notes at the back of the book and everything that's been said in the book it's kind of like just tearing into everyone like it's tearing into gandhiji it's tearing into jawaharlal nehru it tears into mountbatten it tears into um a lot of people actually but i don't want to name all of them now the book basically is based on like the central characters uh, that we see during the independence struggle and when i say characters like real life characters and it talks about um how india gained independence and by the way did you know india's independence got delayed because of some reasons as well otherwise india should have been like independent in 1940 itself but that is something that's mentioned in the book that you should read for sure um so yeah the point is if you're looking for like an eye-opening sarcastic humorous read about indian independence which talks about you know facts and um statistics and figures and be like you know what this is what happened and i have proof for this then this is the book that you have to read okay so yeah that's that and uh, that being said um Another piece of uh, Indian political nonfiction that I have to uh, mention here is The Death Script, Dreams and Delusions in Naxal Country by Ashutosh Bharadwaj. Um, now, this is an absolutely eye-opening book. It's actually written in a somewhat of a diary format because this was a diary that the author was keeping um, from his days in Bastar in Chhattisgarh. So, if you do not know, uh, India has a Naxalite problem like uh, you know where there are armed rebels within the country who um, you know in, in a particular belt who kind of um, are fighting for their principles and you know um, you get the point like they want to bring about a revolution and this book kind of tells you about that it talks to you about the dichotomy of the situation like because you know the thing is these are like villages that are uh, that have adivasis these are villages that have um, 
people who are armed as well and how the police like fit in to this particular situation it's a very very gray area and it was eye opening as well uh, i highly recommend that you read this book in order to get like an insight into the naxalite movement because for me i learned a lot of things from this book uh, especially because uh, the uh, the author also spent 10 days with the naxalites um you know in in their forest camping with them so it's very interesting highly recommend this book if you're looking for some read on the uh, indian non fiction front especially when it comes to naxals and naxalism okay and um that being said i think let's move down a bit to something that's less heavy and uh, the next book that i want to recommend is chup by deepa narayan and this is one of those important books uh, which i feel that every indian should read because it talks about the unexplored biases in indian upbringing when it comes to women and uh, when it comes to girls and when it comes to boys it talks about those um un um explored or that kind of thing where you have that you know like you have some biases within you you have some conditioning within you and this book will kind of be an eye opener telling you about how boys in india are brought up as compared to girls and how girls have this kind of remnants of all of these this kind of conditioning a woman should not be loud okay a girl should not scream a girl should not be loud uh, she should have a calm demeanor to her and she should not voice her opinions but when it comes to boys you're not going to tell them to stop voicing their opinions so you're not going to tell them that oh you are not supposed to raise your voice and this is kind of a problematic thing when it comes to upbringing it majorly focuses on a lot of aspects that we see in the northern belt of india specifically because when i read it i felt like um you know these are like common points that we see in every household which has like a patriarchal setup correct so i i highly recommend this book and i highly uh, you know again let me just tell you that um this book is very accessible so even if you want to gift it to someone who does not read they will also understand the points that the book has to mention and um the accessibility of this book is the key to the entire setup here and that being said this gets me to the last book in the list of course last but not the least like i said every book has its own weightage and this is one of my best treats of the year i also have a separate video on this specific book and that is lost by siddhant thanwant shanghui This book is a beautiful beautiful literary non-fiction I and mean, if you've never read like the literary non-fiction genre this is the book that you have to read okay it talks about uh, Siddhant Shangvi and um how the the pain that he went through when he lost his parents and when he lost his dog uh, it's a very very you know small book it's it just has like 130 pages but then this is a book that you have to read in print it is really heartbreaking and it talks about the journey of loss and it talks about how you deal with grief in general so yes that's it that being said um this is it this is the end of the video and now we've covered like our top fiction we've covered our top non fiction as well today so in tomorrow's video we have to check out the worst of 2021 okay and i hope you're getting up for it because these are the books i absolutely hated in this in this particular uh, year and i'm really hoping for you guys to be there for that particular video okay cool thank you so much for watching i'll see you tomorrow bye